Did I ever tell you the story of how I got kicked out of the theater? I actually, uh, I actually got kicked out of movie theater. It was the... What Harry Potter movie was it? Spoiler or, alert, everyone. He yelled in the theater, Dumbledore dies. Okay, you know this story. I just remembered it. Yeah. Oh, well, uh, it was at the beginning of the movie uh, when the screen just goes dark and everything like that. <laughs> and, like, everything is quiet, and I just yell, Dumbledore dies! And there's just a wave of, oh. <laughs> It's like, maybe if y'all read the books, you would know. <laughs> you read the manga, dude. <laughs> <coughs> I wonder, do they have Harry Potter A manga? Harry Potter manga? It's called Fairy Tale. Anyway. Not close enough. Hello, okay. everyone. Uh, welcome to the sixth episode of the Movie Panda podcast. It's a very exciting one. Uh, we went and saw Deadpool on the day it came out. Or Deadpool 2. Um, we I am joined by my buddy Steve. He hadn't been here in a while. Hello, I'm Steve. And uh, let's just go ahead and jump right into it. Uh, Steve, what were your first impressions of this movie? Um, Thanos gets the Infinity Gauntlet with no, all... No, 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 sp- oh. <laughs> spoiler alert! Okay, if you have not seen God. that yet, you are a terrible human being. You are t- there's not a single person on the planet that I feel like hasn't seen it by now. That isn't like from baby boomer down yeah uh, in good an point. age group yeah good point uh so yeah uh whatever your question was my thoughts on the movie i think that was it like before before you got into the movie oh oh well, i uh, knew what it was, did you think it was gonna be an awesome you know another rendition of not so much taking it straight from comics but just being good old deadpool you know breaking the fourth wall you know being sassy uh cursing a whole bunch stuff like that dying and coming back to life and honestly it would just be ryan reynolds you know being truly who he was meant to be and that is deadpool so yeah i mean i went in there with good and high hopes that it was gonna be a great movie and guess what it was yeah it was a it was a pretty good movie um to, to keep it kind of relatively spoiler free for the first couple of minutes the the simple plot of the movie is Deadpool has been uh, traveling the world being a soup well not really a superhero uh, not even really a hero just just a, a vigilante a, 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 a mercenary that's that's the simple simple name for it <laughs> and uh, you'll I'll have to apologize I'm being I'm very sick today. Um, but, uh, sit circumstances arise and situations lead to the time traveling mutant cable coming back to our time to try and prevent a awful future from happening. And Deadpool has to stop him. Uh, that, that's about the, the long and short of it. Right, Steve? Pretty much. Yeah. Um, it was directed by David. Please tell me if I'm saying this right. David Leach, L E I T C H. Yeah, sure. That sounds good. Um, other works he's done: uh, Atomic Blonde, The Born Ultimatum, John Wick, uh, V for Vendetta. He's just he he's known for a lot of that good action. He's known for and, killing John Wick's dog. Yeah, <laughs> and um, just a just a lot of really good action. Uh, top build cast, you got Josh Brolin as uh, Cable. Thanos. Also Thanos, yeah. <laughs> um, you got Ryan Reynolds playing Deadpool. Green Lantern. Which... <laughs> or that guy from Blade 3. <coughs> oh Sorry. Uh, and Ryan Reynolds... I, I, I'd like to think that in these Marvel movies, um, certain actors are born to play certain roles. Like, you can't tell me that there would be any other person that would be the perfect fit for Iron Man than Robert Downey Jr. And there's no other person that would be the perfect fit for Doctor Strange than Benedict Cumberpatch. Or for Thor than Chris Hemsworth. I think Ryan Reynolds is the perfect choice for Deadpool. Primarily because uh, Ryan Reynolds loves Deadpool. He loves this character. Uh, Very rarely do you get an actor that actually, like falls in love with their character 
and like wants to be actively involved with the writing of the character like Ryan Reynolds was um, and he just he pulls off the characters so well and it's it's not because he makes his attitude similar to Deadpool's it's that I think he and Deadpool share like similar personalities like all of Ryan Reynolds movies that he's in he is the the sarcastic snotty white boy and uh, he just he brings this to Deadpool and Deadpool's a sarcastic snotty white boy that also happens to be able to break the fourth wall. Uh, what do you think, Steve? I feel bad for Ben Affleck because uh, he definitely uh, doesn't look like he has fun like Ryan Reynolds does. Oh, yeah. um, Deadpool has cancer. Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll that, just go ahead and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the um, Ajax die. Ajax dies. Uh, I've always had trouble pronouncing her name. Uh, Deadpool's girlfriend, uh, Marina Baccarin, I believe is her name. Bassarin. I, it, it's, it's, yeah, uh, a hard pretty. name to pronounce. Uh, she did good for the two minutes she was in the movie. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, she did a pretty good job. I think my favorite character was, uh, Zazie Beats. She played Domino. Uh, I really loved the inclusion of Domino in that movie. Um, I didn't... <laughs> We only saw him for a second, but Brad Pitt was the Vanisher. Um, yeah. Bill Skarsgård was Zetergeist, yeah. and uh, he died immediately. Terry Crews is in there as Terry uh, Crews, Bedlam. Bedlam. Uh, Rob Delaney is Peter. Yeah, Peter. Sugar <laughs> Bear. And uh, we got Julian Dennis as Russell. And... Uh, Trying to think of, let's see, oh, Lewis Tan as Shatterstar. Oh yeah. So, we just, it was a very, very, very fun movie. Um, it, I don't think it was a box office smash. Uh, although it is gonna make back all of its money. <laughs> you know, um, yeah. Because Deadpool is just, it's a fun movie. It's not a fun family movie. And I know parents are gonna hear this too little, too late. But if you if you didn't learn your lesson from the first Deadpool, Deadpool is not a movie to take your kids to. Just because it has the Marvel logo on it does not mean it is okay. Do not bring your kids at all. It will you you thought YouTubers were corrupting your kids? Deadpool will corrupt your kids. But it is a family movie in a sense. I mean, as we get into more spoiler stuff later on, uh, it, it, it is a family movie. So we're we're almost at <laughs> the 10-minute mark. I, I think we're about eight minutes. Uh, we're going to go ahead and give... Uh, we're going to put a cap on our, on our spoiler-free review. Uh, just go ahead and tell you... Um, Steve, what was your impression of the movie in the movie and then leaving the movie without spoiling it? In the movie, I was very happy. I was laughing a lot. <coughs> I was pointing out tons of like little tiny cameos and stuff like that, and that made me really excited. It was fun. I really enjoyed it. I left smiling, and I never smile. So <laughs> It's yeah. true. It's it was, true. It was pretty great. Um, and uh, what would you say you rate this movie what did I rate it I think you gave it a 9 oh yeah well I'm kind of generous when a movie uh, I'm pretty generous because when a movie actually makes me happy or like really like impacts me and they're like you know what that was good uh, I mean I, I give it a pretty high up there but this one <coughs> I mean 8.5 a 9 definitely I mean this was just a good movie I think I'd give it a, a, a solid 8 I had a lot of fun in the movie. Uh, if I'm watching a movie, especially one as stupid as Deadpool, uh, I want the movie to kind of be self-aware of how stupid it is and play off of how stupid it is. And Deadpool just did it phenomenally. Uh, I don't think I would give this movie any higher than an 8, but I definitely wouldn't give it a lower score. Uh, it was a wonderful movie really funny and this is the end of the spoiler free review we're gonna go ahead and give you like 
five seconds to click off the video. And uh, then we're going to get into spoiler terror. Okay, so... Spider-Man dies in Infinity War. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and, there it is. Uh, <coughs> so, in the movie, uh, circumstances lead to Deadpool trying to kill himself uh, because he, he doesn't kill uh, a merc that he's trying to kill. And he comes back and and kills his girlfriend. Uh, so Deadpool, it, it's it's a story of Deadpool's depression and Deadpool trying to to find a way to kill himself. But how do you do that when you can regenerate death? Like you you can regenerate your body if all that's left is your head. How do you kill yourself? So a lot of it was a movie about Deadpool trying to come to come to terms with his I guess immortality yeah all the while fighting uh, he Cable was, so really like he was trying to find like his like what was he really supposed to like be doing and stuff like that and I mean really like it came down to like how it, it is a family movie like it came down <laughs> to like Deadpool maybe just up, you know upright crazy and just destructive and all that stuff but like he does hold a lot of I, I, uh, wisdom <laughs> and uh, I don't know like there's like the, the younger children in the movie were definitely able to look up to him and be like you know like there are people out there that will care about you you just have to find them and uh, yeah like there's kind of a soft spot there with uh, just in the movie with the characters and stuff like that but yeah I mean a lot of that also has to, to be with him coming to terms with he can't really kill himself and every time he tries it's just uh never works out in his favor sorry i apologize for that dip in the audio uh trying to get it at a a good level um yeah that's that's a good way to to summarize it uh the movie was absolutely full of shout outs to superheroes both from the marvel franchise and completely outside of the marvel franchise <laughs> DC. Uh, i think at the I think my favorite one of those jokes he made, oh, pardon me, was uh, when it was his anniversary, and he's like, sorry I'm late, I was busy fighting a superhero from another planet, and turns out both of our mother's names are Martha. <laughs> <laughs> I just love the, the, and you know what else I loved? The, uh, the opening scene, whenever uh, he has his music box, and it's just the action figure of Wolverine dead on the tree. <laughs> yeah, from, from Logan. Yeah, from Logan. <laughs> it's just it's like a little oh music box. Um, I liked T.J. Miller's character in this movie too, although he was only in it again for maybe five minutes at most. <coughs> Sorry. And while I wish I got to, s I while I wish we got to see a little bit more of X Force. I'm kind of glad they killed them off immediately and, I, like, didn't make them a thing. Yeah, because, I mean, honestly, that was just introducing a whole bunch of just D-list characters and stuff like that, and it was fun for what it was, but, yeah, killing them off was probably the best thing just because, let's be honest, like, if you've ever read the comics and have seen any of those characters in there, like Shatterstar, uh, oh, what's that one guy, something Geist or whatever. Uh, Bedlam. Yeah, well, there's Bedlam and uh, Vanisher. Like, hey, these people really have no backstory that's really like, oh, man, like, there's a reason why you've never really heard of them. So, I mean, killing them off was uh, ac pretty humorous, actually, with how it all happened and all that. So, <laughs> And uh, the the death of Peter, uh, <laughs> Rip Peter. Um, sugar Bear. Good old Sugar Bear. <laughs> you're, you're still alive in our hearts, Sugar Bear. Well, he did come back to life. Uh, well, okay, so <laughs> it was dumb how he came back to life. Go home, sugar. <laughs> Sorry. Sugar um, my favorite scene was the the end credit scene. Uh, whenever he gets Cable's uh, time control uh, thing and goes back, it basically like erases the events of the movie by saving his girlfriend. And uh, then he's like, "By the way, we're naming our baby Cher." And then he s decides to fix every single timeline so he goes back to uh, X-Men Origins Wolverine and kills Wade Wilson <laughs> from that movie 
and then he like waves to Wolverine. He's like, "Hey, sorry, just fixing all the gaps in the timeline." And he just like <laughs> repeatedly shoots his own corpse. <laughs> and then he Thank goes you. back in time, and Ryan Reynolds is like looking at a script. He's like, "Welcome to the big leagues," and he's looking at a script of Green Lantern, and then just blood splashes all over the script as Deadpool has just shot Ryan Reynolds in the head. <laughs> Um, I think another really cool thing was when he autographed the cereal box and he autographed it Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was, that was pretty awesome. <laughs> uh, the movie was just, it was, it was very funny and it was very fun to watch. Um, I don't think I've had this much fun since, since the first Deadpool, honestly. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's really all Deadpool is. He's. He, it, his story doesn't have to make sense. You don't have to come into the movie believing that you're going to understand completely uh, what's going on. You're not going to understand Deadpool completely. It's just mindless, dumb fun. And if you try, if you go in trying to understand a plot, you're you're not going to have fun with it. Yeah, being an avid Deadpool reader since I was. Uh... Uh, like 13 or 14 when my dad introduced me to Deadpool and stuff and I mean so that's been over yeah, 10 years now. You had a cool dad if he introduced you to Deadpool. Yeah he uh, one of my first movies was Die Hard so if that tells you anything. Oh. Yeah. Um. <laughs> my dad forced me to watch Alien because I scared a kid uh, into believing aliens were real so he's just like huh you punk you're gonna scare him with aliens I'm gonna make you afraid of Alien and dad thank you for making me afraid of Alien. Aliens terrify me to this day. I cannot watch an alien movie and not feel genuine fear. Yeah. Thank you, Dad. You traumatized me. Continue. <laughs> but uh, so just reading the Deadpool comics and stuff like that, like it's usually like there's like a little bit of plot and it's like, oh, cool. Like it gives you something to kind of like keep rolling with. But really, like you're reading it to just see the antics of Deadpool, like what he's getting into trouble with now, who's going to make their cameo appearances like, oh, reading this issue and oh, he's teaming up with Captain America. But Captain America is an old guy and he's lost his powers. And it's just like, wait, what? <laughs> but I mean, it's just like crazy things like that. And so it's like Deadpool, you know, given old man Captain America piggyback ride and stuff like that through like Nazi, you know, machine gun fire. And it's just like, okay. But I mean, going into these movies and stuff, like I don't expect like super awesome plot. Like Cable has a lot of plot to him. But I'm kind of glad they didn't, like, just dedicate the whole movie to him and his story. Like, I feel like they did him justice. But really, like, I went in there like, this is going to be a fun movie. And it was. And it didn't make me feel, you know, awful about characters. Because, like, oh, like, me and Cable should have been cooler than that. I'm like, no, he was pretty stinking awesome. And Cable was pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I feel His like... gun was so cool. Oh, yeah. That thing. Oh. Oh. oh that, <laughs> that, that is a... Um... A gun maniac's wet dream, and that is the uh, that is the AR-15 that the uh, the liberal agenda is <laughs> warning us about. That is that is exactly. The, it is a gun that almost fires guns. Like it has a, a shockwave uh, gun on it. Mm -hmm. You can amplify how powerful the shockwave is. It's got a sniper rifle attachment. It's got a submachine gun attachment. Uh, didn't it have a grenade launcher attachment yes. on it too. Like it was the weapon uh and it could always come back to him like captain yeah because he had like magnetism on it or yeah, something like that. he had the awesome not winter soldier <laughs> winter soldier arm so oh yeah he makes the winter soldier look like a ninny oh yeah which um, fair enough but this this movie okay jacob's about to interrupt our podcast and he turned away from the door good <laughs> uh we're spoiling deadpool jacob no, Doen is not here. He had to go home to his family. Yes, leave us alone. We're recording. What is family? I don't know. <laughs> I love you. I was adopted. Sorry, we're back. Um, don't even think I'm going to cut that part out. No, nope, that's going in. Yeah, it's going in just because you're you're here with us. If if you're if you haven't seen Deadpool yet and you're this far in, you're stuck with us. We're spoiling everything. Deadpool dies. Friend. Um. So that's a that's kind of a well. He dies, and then Cable's like, eh, no, I'm, I, Doctor Strange ain't got nothing on time, I'll reverse time. And, uh, and he does, which, how did, uh, I don't even know her name, uh, we're just gonna call her, uh, uh, Justin Bieber. 
Uh, oh, Mega Death Warhead. Yeah. yeah. How did she know how to fix the time thing? Yeah, that was something I was actually going to bring up because her and also Yukio. Yukio, the same person that was in The Wolverine, that little Asian girl that followed uh, Wolverine around everywhere. Yep. Yeah. It was a completely different person and actually had mutant powers that wasn't did clairvoyance. You? Oh my and... god. Did you did you also <laughs> like, love... did they completely just are they just wreck <laughs> are they just retconning all of Wolverine at this point? Did you also love how he was like, Why is this place so empty? Why is there never any big budget X Men in this mansion? We can't even get one of the washed up ones. What about <laughs> like Pigeon Wing? And like <laughs> Colossus just looks behind him and all the main cast of the X Men movies are like in um uh, Xavier's office, and they just slowly close the door. Yeah, and all of the previous movies, it was all the ones from the most recent uh, Days of Future Past. Yeah. So it, it wasn't like, you know, you're getting the guy, whoever the guy was that played like Scott Summers and all that. Like, he yeah. was not there. <laughs> it's just, it was awesome. Yeah, that was um, a very nice cameo they put in there. Um, let's go ahead and talk about the fight scenes. Uh, the fight scenes were pretty awesome for, for however low budget they were uh, they was like they were they were, they were CGI fests but they weren't like like I was never bored by them yeah um, and, and I think all the best fight scenes were like the fight scenes with Domino because it was just watching her power work around her and like most people don't think that's her power they and she's just bored throughout the entire situation <laughs> because luck is on her side she can't fail uh, and she just has to stand there really and luck will fight for her yeah um, but like just seeing like cars explode and uh, freeways fall apart around her and she's just <sighs> just falls into yeah, an just... inflatable panda bear <laughs> like nothing's happened <laughs> Or like whenever uh, Juggernaut appeared and he goes to Deadpool, he's like, I'm going to rip you in half now. He's like, oh, okay. And he just picks him up and <laughs> yeah. rips him in half. Um, are we are we going to talk about uh, regenerating Deadpool with his baby legs and his uh, baby-sized penis? Oh, yeah, they showed that. Uh, yeah, they showed a baby-sized <laughs> penis on screen. But I, I feel like Ryan Reynolds specifically requested that that be in the movie. Yeah. Um, that just seems like a Ryan Reynolds thing to do. Uh, I, I really like the, the cab driver in this movie too. <laughs> yeah. They make him a lot more relevant. Yeah. And like, he's almost got like a psycho vibe to him. I mean, when you're hanging around, you know, Wade Wilson for a long time. Oh enough. yeah. <laughs> and like his very first introduction, he's like, I need to find my purpose. I think my purpose, I want to be a contract killer at which Deadpool is just like, yeah, we're never having this conversation ever. <laughs> Well, he's also bringing up, like, what was it, an interview with a vampire? Yeah. He's bringing up how, like, all this kind of oddly sexual stuff, and it's like, yeah, I'm going to pretend we never talked about this. Yeah. Um, oh, gosh. Steve, what was one of your favorite parts of the movie? Hmm. I liked all the parts of Cable, honestly. Yeah? I really just enjoyed seeing him, because he is one of my favorite comic book people. Like, I played him on Marvel vs. Capcom 2, on, I believe I played that one on the Dreamcast, and then he was always the like one of the characters I would pick. But uh, like just seeing him in a movie, it was like, oh man, this is so cool. And I mean, they made him really like cool. Like his fighting sequences were so cool because it's like he's just pulling out like future tech every like every turn. He's just like, oh, I got something for that. And it's just like, my goodness, <laughs> it's just like the future oh. is cool. Yeah, apparently it's really. It's awesome. also like. Terminator land and I wish we got to see more of that dystopian future yeah honestly the only view we got of the dystopian future was from the view of uh, Cable's kitchen uh, as he's just looking out and what I assume is Skynet touring around uh, trying to, to find humans and kill them or whatever uh, or maybe it's just like humans trying to fight back against the mutants. Yeah, I think that's what it was because he was part of a uh, kind of an extermination person who takes care of uh, basically like Ma rogue mutants. Yeah, like Maverick mutants and all that. And, well, Maverick is a mutant, but huh, uh, that's a whole other thing. But um, that's a whole other movie. No, <laughs> hopefully not. But <laughs> um, 
Actually, yeah, Maverick was in one of the, he was in the X Men Oranges. He uh, oranges. 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 X Men Oranges. Uh, he was uh he was Zero. Oh, okay. Yeah. But his real name's Maverick, but they call him Zero, and it's kind of like is that like a reference to Mega Man or something? But whatever. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Not everything's a Mega Man reference, Steve. No, but it is a Berserk reference. Yes. Um, every, oh, <laughs> that's a conversation for a different day. Oh, we can do that later. Um, but, now comes the big question, primarily because I'm run, running out of topics to talk about, um, which we may have to cut this podcast short because one, I'm sick, and uh, two, we can't just keep spoiling the movie. Uh, what do you think? What is your opinion on the uh, belief that we will get an X Force movie? I feel like it can definitely happen. I mean, seeing seeing what they did and how the success of this movie is definitely just gonna be like it's gonna happen. Like this is gonna be one of those movies that makes tons of money. My thing is, I don't know if they'll do that because my theory, like with Infinity War, like it's kind of going to retcon some stuff and if you read the business reports like marvel has bought the rights back from fox and sony and so that means they have like all the rights for spider-man venom uh anything x-men like all that stuff is gonna basically be disney at some point but i don't know if like so really like i would love an x-force movie but if that kind of theory like if that thing does happen and reading the business ports it looks very likely uh i I don't know i don't know if they would make that a priority but at the same time like if they made it i i feel like people would go watch it even if there is like five marvel movies a year it's just hey like it's gonna be at the point where it's like it's gonna be like comic books almost like instead of like an issue a month it's like hey you get like four or five movies a year so it's like every three months you get a new movie and it's like okay (laughs) it's like that's cool if they do an X Force movie, with your knowledge of the comics, what members would be on the X Force? <coughs> Sorry about that. <clears throat> well, I mean, Wolverine would be one. I know he was more originally on there. There's people like his name's Warpath. He's kind of like a Native American dude and with stabby knives and stuff like that. And I can't really remember what his power was. Just stabby knives, not yeah. the normal type of knives. No, like they're typically for stabbing and all that. Oh, okay. Uh, Domino's on there, of course. Of course. Uh, you'll see. In in Domino, like one of Deadpool's girlfriends. Yeah. Okay, so they've built up to that. Yeah. Um, Phantom X. He's oh, a, he's a cool yeah. one. Uh, I mean, Cable, of course. Colossus. Uh, I mean, there, there's several. I mean, there's just a whole bunch of people who could we show up. We haven't seen Phantom X and X Men yet, have we? No. Okay. And that's probably fine. I mean, he doesn't have like the biggest story in the X Force comics, which those were back around 2010. Like he was in there for a while, and then so was Deadpool. They were actually on the same X Force around that time. But I don't know. I, I don't know who to expect who would be on there if they would. I'm sure they would bring in new characters. And, you know, try to start building some of these people up. Because, I mean, look at Colossus. Like, now we actually get to see Colossus in action rather than just him showing up and stopping tranquilizer darts like in the second X-Men movie back in the day. Yeah, and his fight scene was really cool, too. Oh, oh, uh, he was... Against Juggernaut. Yeah, he was... Oh, I liked how he got, like, a dent in his head. Yeah. And I'm just like, oh. How do you fix that? Yeah. <laughs> how do you heal that? Like, I know probably, you're made of metal, but it's how probably do you heal like, that? It's probably just a gash in his head kind of deal. But I was like, okay. But I'm like, hey, I mean, he did get, like, torn in half in Days of Future Past. He so lost like, a tooth, yeah. too. Did he? I didn't see that. Yeah, he got his tooth knocked out, like, the front <laughs> one. Like, do they employ a dentist to take care of metal men teeth? Well, I mean, he can just revert back to normal and I mean, get, maybe. get, like, a fake tooth. And all I don't that, know. But. Maybe. Uh, let us know your opinions of Deadpool if you've seen it. Uh, if not, and you've gotten this far, sorry for spoiling the movie for you, but Deadpool's just, Deadpool's fun, so you're, you're, you're not really missing You're gonna enjoy a lot. it, don't worry. You're gonna have loads of fun. We're just gonna call it early on this podcast. I know that all the other ones have been, uh, way longer, but honestly, what else can we say about Deadpool? Deadpool is Deadpool. He always will be Deadpool. He never will not be Deadpool. Uh, and you're never, ever, ever going to be able to end or replace Deadpool. Deadpool forever. Um, I think I'm just going to call it on this podcast. Thank you for yeah. 
staying and listening. Oh, we're so close to like exactly thirty minutes that I just kind of I mean, want to get. Let's draw it out. Same thing. Yeah, let's like, just keep saying. Like one time, I was four years old and I was born without a face, and that was really nice. Thank you, Aaron Hansen, for joining me on this podcast. Of course, and uh, you have a wonderful rest of your day. Goodbye. Bye.